Hello, my name is Ray Benj, and I am going to be teaching the class this summer, and this is Physics 1403, Stars and Galaxies. So let's kind of right in here. So why do we even study astronomy? I study astronomy because I find it interesting. I just like to know how things work up there. Also, there's always something new. Every time I teach the class, there's something new uh, in the sky, something new to talk about. There's a new comet, there's an eclipse, new discoveries. Um, as we start this class, I'm also attending a conference, American Astronomical Society, uh, and learning brand new things about galaxies and stars, which I'll be talking about later on this semester. The Earth is a planet, and the planet is part of the solar system, so Earth is not all by itself in the solar system. So one of the things we want to talk about is how does what's out there affect what's here on Earth? There's always something new. For example, a few years ago I got to actually take this photograph that you see right here of a solar eclipse. Uh, just a couple years ago, uh, this summer, uh, a spacecraft was launched to skim right near the surface of the sun, giving us our closest, best views of the sun. Uh, the sun's so vital to how life operates on Earth, you'd think we'd know more about it, but we don't. So this was a, this was a fantastic opportunity. Uh, and as I said, Earth's not all by itself. Just uh, about seven years ago, uh, there was this meteor flying across the sky in Russia. It exploded. Uh, it was uh, it exploded with the force of a hydrogen bomb, 500 kilotons. That's that's half a megaton. Uh, 1,500 people were injured, uh, and, and 4,300 buildings. Uh, we didn't hear as much about that in the United States as other parts of the of the world did, but this was a big deal. So there's always something happening. So the sky. I mean, I guess Chicken Little was right here. The sky was falling. You wonder when was the most recent atomic bomb-sized impact? Just last summer. Something about the size of an atomic bomb splashed into the Caribbean Sea, uh, south of Puerto Rico. And so there are things that happen on a regular basis. Uh, uh, but the, besides that, there's another thing, uh, the sun. Sun is vital to life on Earth, but every now and then on the sun there are are giant explosions blowing stuff away from the sun. If that stuff runs into Earth, then that gives rise to what we call a geomagnetic storm. We'll be talking more about geomagnetic storms later. Uh, there was one of the biggest geomagnetic storms, and you can look this up online uh, on the internet, is the Carrington event. The Carrington event was so powerful that, that uh, it was shortly after telegraph lines had been run across the U.S., that it, it energized the telegraph lines to the point they caught fire and the telegraph system went down. Now, we don't worry about that today. We're not worried about telegraphs, but power lines could do the same thing. Now, think about it. If there were an event as big as the Carrington event, and if it were to hit again, what would that do? We're not talking, about, not talking about knocking out power, I mean, uh, uh, telegraph talk, not knocking out power lines, all of the power lines throughout the entire country. This would be like the zombie apocalypse minus the zombies. Uh, um, it'd be horrendous because imagine no electrical power. You can't, you can't say, oh, well, I got a generator because there would be no way of getting fuel to the generator. Once you ran out of fuel, you'd, you'd be up a creek. Uh, uh, came run off natural gas because they, they, they require electricity or, or other sort of ways of, of operating the pumps uh, to, to get gas to you. So uh, this, this would be the end of civilization as we know it. So could such a thing happen? Well, uh, back around 2007 or so, there was a massive solar storm that was equally as big as the one that triggered the Carrington event. The difference is it blew stuff off in a different direction instead of blowing it towards Earth. And so, yeah, this can happen. Uh, in fact, it's such a big deal that the government has actually started monitoring the sun 
um, and establish early warning systems to let people know this is going to happen. Now, maybe not necessarily the general public, but at least the utilities and so forth, so they can at least take some lines off, off. I mean, take take some generators and things offline to try to protect some things. Okay, so that's why we study it. So. Uh, what I want to do now is talk a little bit about some of the things here that that uh, students always, you know, worry about. That's how's the course go? And that's going to be the syllabus. In the syllabus are various important dates. Uh, 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 and and uh, you ought to look at that. Uh, the syllabus has been posted online on the web page. Uh, test dates are listed, uh, other sort of dates are listed, some of the labs are listed, the textbook is listed. Now the textbook itself is, is free, it's online, uh, so you can go there. This class was added late and I wasn't sure that the bookstore would be able to get the regular textbook that we normally use to people. And so I elected to go with a free online book. It's not quite as good, but it, it should suffice. And so pay attention to the lectures here, and that, that'll, that'll get you through. Uh, look at the Blackboard site. On the Blackboard site, you have some what we call distant nature labs. I'll explain this. These are labs that are based on a program called Stellarium. And Stellarium is a program you download and install on a computer. There's a, there is a web version of it if you can't install one. And it's going to be a very helpful. I'm going to have some handouts posted and some old exams. A lot of students wonder, well, how do I study for your, your, your test? Well, I've actually posted tests here that I've given in previous semesters. So if, if you can look at those tests, if you study for this test and then you look at the old test and say, oh, I know how to do this, then you should be doing okay. Uh, uh, so a lot of people will, 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 will study the old test as a study guide. Now, I'm not going to ask the same questions. Don't expect that. Uh, but if, if you could do well in the old test, you ought to be able to do well on this semester's test. Okay. I'll say more about all this later. You should be familiar with the uh, international system of units. This is kilograms, meters, and so forth. Um, it's what in this country we typically call the metric system, though technically the official name is the international system or SI, which is French for international system. Uh, scientific notation. Uh, you should know how to use scientific notation uh, because the numbers we use are very big. Use, learn how to use it on your calculator. Learn, learn how to use it correctly on your calculator. If you are entering these numbers into the calculator and you don't enter them correctly, it doesn't work well. So on the syllabus, you notice there's three tests, okay, and those three tests uh, are spaced out. Uh, they're obviously going to be online. Uh, there's a final exam. The final exam is going to count double what the other tests are. Okay, so three regular tests and the final exam. The final exam is cumulative. It covers everything. Okay, and um, each of these tests is worth 100 points. The final is going to be worth 200 points. It, it, it's worth double, okay. And there's a term paper. The term paper is worth 100 points. Now, here's the thing. I will drop either the term paper or one of the tests or the final counts double, so I drop one of those, whichever one is lowest. So if you're doing well in the test, if you're good at taking tests, and you want to study on the, on the, for the test, you can ignore the term paper. Just don't even do that. Uh, sa save, save time, study the test. If you are really good at writing papers, then you might want to look at the term paper, look at the instructions of the term paper. Now, this is not just, you know, you, you print something off really fast. You know, it's not a, a quickie paper. This is a major paper uh, that's going to take uh, a couple months worth of work to write a good paper. This is not something you do at the last minute and expect it to be a good paper. Uh, uh, so 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 you either, you either start the semester thinking, I want to write something, uh, or, you focus on the, uh, or you focus on the tests. Okay, uh, uh, th this gives you the flexibility as a student to decide which way works best for you. So, so uh, that this, this is going to be 500 points right here. All this together is 500 points because I'll drop whatever one's the lowest. Short papers, there's a handful of little short papers. Basically, what you're going to do is read something in the news.
something that's fairly recent, not just a generic, you know, web thing, don't go to Wikipedia, but an actual news item, something in the news, you know, a news source, CNN, Fox, you know, USA Today, uh, Astronomy Magazine, Discovery, uh, spaceweather.com, or space.com. These are several different, different news websites, not a, just a generic site, but an actual news website read something about astronomy and write a short paper about it. That's a required assignment that, that the syllabus tells you, gives you that many points. There's some labs that we're going to be doing. Some of the labs will be worksheet based. I've already posted one of them there uh, the, uh, using star charts. Uh, the worksheet based labs are 15 points a piece and the, the Stellarium, the software based labs are 10 points a piece. I'll have a separate presentation in which I explain how all this thing works. Uh, but this is just kind of getting you started. And then extra credit. If you happen to be uh, uh, up late at night looking at uh, TV and you see a documentary about astronomy or you hear a talk, uh, TED Talks or, or various other presentations, lectures, you know, online lectures, whatever, you know, people explaining something about astronomy, uh, all this stuff, go out and observe something, uh, 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 you learn something. And so write a little short paper about that and turn that in. And what I do at the end of the semester is I just add points. Everybody wants to know how much does this count or that count. I don't do that. I add points. Okay. In the syllabus, it tells you how many points you need to get an A and how many points you need to get a B and so forth. If you get over 500 points, you have a C. Okay. If you get over 575 points, you get a B. If you get over 650 points, you get an A. Okay. So if you have 650 points before the end of the semester, you don't have to take the final or anything because you already have all the points that you need. Okay. And so what you can do is, because I only add points, it doesn't matter how you get the points. Whether you get the points of the tests or the papers or the labs, do extra things or whatever, you just want to get points. Okay, and so this way, as a student, you get to be flexible. You get to say, hey, I'm going to do this, these kinds of things. I'm going to really put the effort into the sorts of things that I'm best at. And then get points that way. So that's the basic idea as to how I do the class. Okay. Other things you'll need, you'll need a calculator. Okay, uh, scientific calculator, something that they can do, they can handle logarithms and, ex and scientific notation and so forth. Uh, I'm going to have a few assignments where you go outside and look at stuff. And the problem is when you go outside and look at stuff, it's dark, and so you need a flashlight. Now, uh, uh, one of the things that happens though is if you have just a flashlight, then when you look at something, you lose your dark adaption, then you can't see in the dark anymore. Now, astronomers have realized if you have a red filter on the end of the flashlight, then that means you don't lose your dark adaption. So they sell these flashlights, they have red filters, but hey, this is the 21st century. There's actually an app you can download on your phone that turns the screen red. And it's usually called red light. Okay, and astronomers is really boring at how we name stuff like that. And so uh, that would be another option for you. It would turn your phone into a red flashlight for you. And that way you'd be able to see in the dark. Okay. So what we're going to do is this semester, we're going to start with background information. That's here at the beginning. We're going to talk then about how stars work. Then we're going to talk about the sun, which is our nearest star, how stars are formed and how stars die. And then we're going to talk about how planets form because they're a byproduct of star formation. At the end of the semester, we're going to talk about galaxies and then cosmology, the study of the universe itself. And so that is kind of where we're heading with all of this.